Hey, what's up? So today I'm going to be walking you through some of my thinking and processes when I was making this um, Beretta 93R pistol for Paragon. And it's like a long video, it's like 20 minutes, so I'll probably end up like skipping around and like during some of the interesting parts, I'll comment on those, but just to get right into it. Right now I'm working on the trigger guard and I'm working on like retaining my quad topology right here. So you can sort of see uh, on the left side, I included my screencast keys. So if you're ever curious, you know what keys I'm pressing. They're uh, found over on the left side, but yeah, I'll just butt in randomly and I'll uh, speed it up at certain points when it gets boring, so. So right at this point, I thought that this was a pretty cool thing that I did. Um, I pretty much turned a bevel with an end gun into good quad topology. And um, I ended up using my Boolean alternative method that you can find in a previous video. And I used that same technique right there. So right here I start working on the handguard, but I was thinking about like the technique that I used here and I would have really liked to have been able to get rid of the faces behind uh, the bit where I put the little the grip in, but I just really wasn't able to without creating more uh, triangles for myself. So really the efficient method for this was to just leave it as is and to sort of work over it and place it over and mirror it to the other side. But uh, while I was doing this, um, I didn't bother putting in any of the screws or anything like that because those were just gonna be textured in later. And I would save quad count uh, by doing that. So right around here, I begin work on the slide. And this was a pretty unique challenge because some of the angles that the slide you know, has on the model are really strange. So I needed to import another picture in order to get like a reference angle um, from that view. And that really helped with making the iron sights and being able to get the profile of the uh, slide down. And towards the back, you can sort of see where the hammer is. It has this weird rounded shape. And that was like a very unique um, shape to create while you have a flat looking back. Like you can see on that gray reference picture, the back looks rather flat. 
and on this one with the white background, it looks rather rounded. So finding that balance was you know, interesting to the least, but uh, I worked through it and eventually I got to a result that I'm happy with. And part of my process was making sure that I got like that slide connection. You can see where it would, uh, during a weapon teardown, you'd be able to actually slide the weapon off and lock it into place um, through that binding at the rear. So while I was making the hammer here, I thought it was going to be really difficult to get that quad topology, but it turned out to really not be that bad at all. All I really ended up doing was filling um, right at the bottom. And I extruded um, my faces on the end of the hammer and I created two loop cuts and from there I was able to join and then make that hole that the hammer has. And I think that came out pretty good and I still retain my quad topology, which I'm always going for. So throughout this process of UV unwrapping, what I had done was I mirrored the model. Um, so that way it was like one side that actually needed to be unwrapped and that would have just applied to both sides, but the gun isn't the same on both sides. So what I'm doing right now is I'm editing the model. So that way I still have, you know, the details that are only on one side on that one side, but for the majority of the asset, it's a larger texture. And by doing this, I'm able to get a higher quality texture when I only do um, my 1K unwrap. So this technique is really useful when you have limited size for um, your texture sets. And personally, I like using it because it makes texturing quicker. And you know, it's also just really efficient. So it's a nice thing to be able to do. So. I start out with my texture by just baking it and um, that makes it that way. I can really get some nice results with some of my smart materials that I use in Substance Painter. And I had also decided to separate the slide and the lower into two separate parts. And that was for a few reasons. One, mainly being that I wanted to make sure I had enough room on my texture for the lower to have enough quality um, for some of the finer details like writing in maybe um, like a custom manufacturer stamp and some of the like smaller details that would be on the gun. And two, just because it's a lot easier to texture when you have things like fully separated like that, especially if you're gonna import them with separate parts. And I wanted this to be a two separate part project. So you know, if this slide did need to function, it would be able to, and it was animatable and rigable. So earlier on, I said I wasn't gonna include the screws as a part of the model, but it was really the only good way to do it. So um, later in this texture, you'll see me add a little bit of detail for these um, two black screws right above and below the Beretta logo. But I did end up adding those in. Um, and I think that it turns out for a lot nicer of a gun. And I think that that extra little detail truly adds to like, I don't know, it makes it look more three-dimensional and better in my opinion.
all right well that's all i got for um, this video a uh, big thank you to the foundation investors for making this a possibility so if you watch this video and enjoy it um you can thank the foundation investors of paragon research institute and uh thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next one